we are still making far too many mistakes defensively in terms of giving the ball away as well in bad in areas that we have to get better in that side of the players start playing better or come January we are going to have to do quite a bit of shifting around um I think today once that goal went in which was a little bit out the blue I don't think they were threatening an awful lot um but we've that we conceded a terrible goal. I mean, I know McGee spoke about the second goal being unacceptable. To me, the first one was the worst one. In that, it's a goal kick that their fellas had a header uncontested. The guys then walk, walked off Leo Connor into space and been able to thread a pass through. Tom Davis has got his feet tangled and kicked it, God knows where. McGee's gone out to close the angle down. Why he's gone down? where he's allowed the guy to chip it over him, I'm not entirely sure. And then, like Rich has said, Tom Davis is then on the line and just really should have been able to go back and clear that ball. So it was a calamity of errors there. And that's, I think, the sort of thing you've got to put out these these errors. Um, and the crew next week, we know they're a, a good football inside and we are struggling against teams who attack with movements and a bit of football in now we have got to be a lot better at the basics like nigel keeps saying um and these individual mistakes just cannot happen um is that partly where the players are at in terms of confidence in terms of ability i don't know um but i i think we do have players who are a lot better than they're showing but they've got to cut the mistakes out um today after they scored it was and I think Nigel was trying to get the crowd going at that point because I think he felt this is a big sort of five minutes up to half time where I think he sort of saw what was coming. Um, and again, the second goal, goal, ball down the channel, down the side, like we've seen so many times, a cross that's come in, we've not stopped the cross. I think it was a good block from, I think it was Leo Connor in the middle. That was good defending. But then the second ball, the striker has just walked off Yarny and and finished it and that's the thing like Trekker isn't going to kick the ball in your net if you're a center half just pick the man up and one of our center halves who should be one of the best at doing that has has not done that um so i think Nigel will be back on monday just reinforcing that you've got to be good at the basics particularly away at crew because if we're not we'll concede another two or three goals and it'll be Another very happy review show on a Sunday, I'm sure. You're right. I think uh, human beings' mistakes, for me, let's go back to my point about indecision is final. Um, muscle memory at this moment in time, nothing seems to look like it's flowing. But let's look at the positive. That's four points in a week. Um, you know, we've got to... We've got to be realistic. It's still only October. I know I keep, and a lot of people are telling me that, you know, I'm mental. And obviously I'm well known for being normally positive and delusionally positive and just a mouthpiece for Mark Palios, obviously. Um, but uh, now I, I really do think at the football club, there's this effort that shows that people are trying, that people are trying to improve the situation we're in. I don't think all is lost yet. I, I, I think you made a point there, Tom, about we're going to a very good crew side. I'm yet to see a very good side in this division. Notts County appear to be walking it. And the reality of it is, is in that game, yes, they absolutely played us off the park in one of the most balmy setups that Tramier ever sent to an away game. Um, but the reality of it is that was 2 1, and they were clinging on at the end. We could have very easily took a point. Um, there is no one at this level that is elite. As much as Nigel says, doing the basics to an elite level, there is no one at this level that's elite. Today, Grimsby were very, very ordinary. And ironically, in the way that we set up in trying to break those lines and move Connor Jennings into the space uh, and move Morris into the space, we played in pockets the far better football than what they did. However, the alarming and the negative to that is how easy it was for them to transition the game from us being on the front foot to us being on the back foot. There was very little resistance. And as you said, defenders are having to think twice about doing something. Instead of just taking the man, following the man, there's that indecision. Do I stay? Do I go? And then that indecision is final. That gives them that little bit of a space. So 
for me, yeah, crew's a test, not because crew are great, but it's because we're away from home. It's because we've got this little duck on our backs that we need to, you know, I don't even know if that's the right phrase. We've got this little this little voodoo that we need to break. We need to take something from an away game. And for me, you look back to last season, crew away, and the start of this year, New Year's Day, was a pretty big game in the grand scheme of things because that was when the wheels really started falling off our wagon. We were looking at a late promotion charge. Elliot Nevitt missed from five yards out. And yeah, we, we ended up losing 1-0 in a game that we should never have lost. And it was ultimately the end of Mellon, the end of the um, uh, the Tramia charge up the table. All, for me, started there if never had put that five yard chance away and we'd moved on and won that game like we ultimately would have done that could be a very big slide indoors moment and well it would have been no e indoors thank god um but hey ho we, we move forward i think the positivity around the club is good this you know for me at the game as well the crowd were a lot more involved today and i think they're they're, they're a pat on the back to the, the swa because there was at times when the rather small disappointing attendance that was just under six thousand sounded quite raucous and was almost like a football crowd um it, it, it's something that uh ultimately there's plenty of people unhappy with the ownership situation my argument and my thing that i'll put across is look at the end of the day we're owned by who we're owned by until we're not there is no one apart from certain people spouting what is rumors that we're, 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 we've got some kind of a takeover as far as i'm concerned i'm a trammy rovers fan i'll support whoever owns the club and uh, i'll support them as long as they seem to be doing to to the levels that um that i deem acceptable to make us better and I, I, i'm at that point now i still believe that this regime whether it be the radio silence and not many options for a new manager coming in, um, be 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 uh, ideal or not, you know whatever you think of it, I, I trust that the people in the club, whether it be Nigel, Mark, um, Hodgy, you know Dan's, I trust that they're working to get us better and get us up that league table. I don't think everything is lost for this season. It's going to be very very miraculous if we are to be up the right end of the table. But you know what? We, it's that Ubi fights. Ibi looks at Rabor in it. We've got to have a little bit of faith, in my opinion. And the, the SWA today, chatting and cheering on, that was the faith I needed to kind of hear.